Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. I'm your host, Pat Sun, and today we're going to be taking a look at r slash relationship advice, where OP seemingly never learned his lesson. And before we begin, I just wanted to let you guys know that OP's original post was from eight years ago and made a second update a few years later. But now, just a few days ago, OP yet again posted another update, and we will be checking that out today. So without further ado, you better sit back, relax, hold on to your Dragon Balls, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll begin. I caught my wife posting on NSFW subreddits and sexting her ex. Posted by Reddit user L Throwaway Account. We've been together for three years. We didn't always see eye to eye on everything, but we were madly in love and got married. However, I was upset when she put on a lot of weight and didn't feel like doing anything. Like cooking, cleaning, paying bills, working, etc. So we had a lot of fights while we lived together. I would tell her how it all made me feel, but she wouldn't say how she felt. She'd just say I'm right, which made me think she was fine. Really what it is, is she has a hard time communicating and opening up, but she tried to do better and that kept things working. A couple months ago during sex, she asked if I ever thought about sex with another woman. I said of course not, but she pressed me so much that I asked her, and she said she had a guy in mind that she wanted to have sex with, and they could the next Sunday. By the end of this, you are going to be crying. Like a little bitch. Which she forgot was going to be my birthday party, so that hurt for more reasons than one. So of course I was so angry and hurt, and she felt bad and stopped speaking with this guy. She had been telling him all of our problems instead of me, and apparently had been sexting him unbeknownst to me, but she cut it off when I told her no way in hell. After that our marriage declined pretty quickly, with me still mentioning divorce because of how poorly things were. She almost seemed like she just didn't care anymore. Well after one final fight she agrees to divorce, thinks it's best and leaves. For the next two weeks I thought she was hanging out with girlfriends, because that is what she told me. I found her dating account online and was a mess. She said she was just talking to them, nothing more. She then said she deleted it, but she didn't. I mentioned it again, and then she actually did. However, she already got dozens of phone numbers and Snapchat accounts of men at this point. I saw her notifications on her phone and saw that she was still texting these guys while living with me. Now I realize we essentially agreed on divorce, but at least have the common decency to wait until you move out. We still hung out together and lived together, it was pretty cordial. Either way she was barely been around for two weeks, she'd come home, shower, do her makeup, and spend the night at a friend's house. Only apparently, she never saw a single friend in those two weeks. She slept with five different marines and sexted three more guys on top of that. She gave everything special away. Everything from the sex acts, to cuddling and kissing, showering with them, dirty talk, dates, compliments, pictures, everything. <laughs> she thought we had broken up, but I didn't realize how bad the situation was, and thought she just needed time to herself. Well she came home one night and I just had a hunch at this point. I went through her phone and saw some of this stuff I described, and it killed me. I confronted her and she first said she just kissed a guy. Well a couple guys. Well they made out. Well she banged one. Well she banged three, sexted only those three, and kissed two more. Well she had sex with all five and sexted eight or nine total. The only solace is they all wore condoms except during oral. After learning all this, I died inside. She said she needed the attention, she wanted to feel desired, that she knew she was good at sex, and that she thought we were done for, didn't think I loved her anymore, and I get it. I don't condone it, but I understand at least. It just hurts that the day she decides we're done, she's already lining up these guys while I sat at home waiting for her to possibly come back from this. We didn't actually start any divorce paperwork, and she was right to an extent to feel that way, as I was increasingly upset with the huge weight gain. Good lord, how is he so fat? Lack of communication, and lack of fixing the little things that irked me. I suggested a counselor multiple times, but she refused. Now she has since deleted and blocked every single one of them from what I have seen, and hasn't talked to anyone except her family the last few days. Meanwhile I've been physically ill from picturing what they did together, ended up in the hospital for dehydration after four days of this. Every time I imagine an act they did, a wave of nausea passes over me. I can't handle it and have decided to see a counselor just to be safe. 
I wanted to forgive her when I first found out she was talking to them, but she let me have sex with her after she had been intimate with someone else the night before, which disgusts me to think some other man had their way with my wife the night before me and a different one the night before him. She let me kiss her, go down on her, etc. Of course she had cleaned up since the act, but just the thought of it is repulsive. But she stopped having sex halfway through those two weeks, almost to spite me she said. That they found her hot and I didn't, and then soon after is when I found out about it all and broke down. I can't eat, sleep, etc. I still somehow love her but I am so, so disgusted by her actions. And as a marine, hearing that five other lower ranking marines had their way with my wife just destroys me inside. It wasn't just business like sex, it was the whole nine yards. Foreplay, rough, whatever the hell. She said she liked them but certainly didn't love them, and she knows they didn't love her. They did go on dates and everything, but I guess that's to be expected with this kind of thing. You rarely just show up, have sex, and leave with people. So I guess my question is, the only real cheating was when she sexted a guy a couple months ago. Then we agreed we needed a divorce and she slept around and sexted a lot of guys after that. Before any paperwork was filed though. So where should I go from here? Every time I'm with her, I don't want to do anything that she did with other men. But she thought she was single at that point, so is that fair? I had even tried to line up a one-night stand once I had that hunch she was sleeping around, but that fell through. So the furthest I got was being called handsome by a stranger who I called beautiful. A drop in the pond compared to what my wife said and did, but she also did so much with them. It wasn't just boring vanilla sex. It was almost everything we've ever done, just with less pet names and it disgusts me when I imagine what she did with each and every one of them. I prodded for as much detail as I could so I knew exactly what I was working with. Because if I'm ever to forgive it, I need to know what it is. This has crushed my manhood and confidence, after hearing how attractive they were, how she did enjoy some of it more than some of our sessions. But she said it wasn't worth it, that I'm the one she loves, and she wishes she could take it all back. But is this something that is even salvageable with counseling and hard work? Or will I always vomit at thoughts of her actions? She says she is 100% committed, and understands if I can't ever get over this but would really want to fix this after realizing what's wrong with her and how much I love her. Sorry for the wall of text, and any insight would really be appreciated. My parents think I should cut all ties. Her parents are pretty divided, understanding completely if I want to leave, but think it may be fixable. But no one I know has come close to having experience with this. TLDR, she cheated a bit, we agreed on divorce, she slept with five men and sexted a few more, and now wants to salvage this. Now for update a few years after the original post. So it's been quite some time since my crazy last post, and I'm sure many who read this may not have even read the first one originally. But to anyone that had, or to anyone who's curious how a disaster of a situation can be resolved, I figured I'd share. Over three years ago I asked for some advice to guide me in my failing marriage. Looking back, I'd say it's pretty obvious how it had to end. But at the time, boy were things murky for some reason. You get so used to a relationship that it's hard to picture a life afterwards. You get used to inside jokes, how sex works with a person, what restaurants to eat at. But did I take everyone's advice to get the hell out right away? Nope. Things got worse before they got better. I was in a bad state in my opinion. I lost a lot of weight from not eating, where I was not fat to begin with. My friends noticed how tired and pale I looked. I kinda felt the main character getting shit on in a dramatic movie. You know, the kind where you can't walk down the street without a car splashing a puddle on you. Anyways, after the post, which I showed her and she just loved, really, I had two main and conflicting thoughts. One, I don't want to get divorced. We're young but we can fix this. Or two, screw this, I'm gonna sleep around and get revenge while I file for divorce. Neither were probably particularly healthy, but at the time, I'd say I was experiencing strong and unfamiliar emotions. And these were my two solutions. So I tried both I guess. She promised to be better, so we agreed on counseling just in case it could be salvaged. Wow, like a bitch. And that's what Frieza said. After counseling, we stayed at her mom's house for a weird group intervention and counseling session. Neither party was guilty here according to them, which really chapped me. Maybe it wasn't about the blame game, but come on, you've gotta recognize how crazy that cheating was. No, I'm the crazy one. Okay, but regardless, I figured I was trying right. Put in the effort, don't be so quick to throw things away like our generation tends to do. Well lo and behold, she had never stopped talking to these same guys. These plagues of my life. 
I'd catch her every couple days talking to a different one still. Joey would remark how good of a fuck she was. Tyler would ask when they'd meet again. One time I remember I'd woken up, committed her phone pin to memory with how damn often I'd check it, and saw her exchange I love you with Matt. I woke her up all pissed off, and somehow this was the final straw. I guess because now it wasn't even just sex, but full-on dating if you will. That she might choose to leave me after all this. My mind couldn't handle that scenario, my brain had stopped responding. So I said to her, that you have today while I'm at work to pack your things and leave for good. I returned home to an empty apartment thankfully, yet still very married. I decided screw it though, time for some payback. I then tried my hardest for someone night stands, very mature, I know. I was very upfront with what I was looking for to these girls. But for some awful reason, I still would hook up with my cheater wife. <coughs> The whole you leave your girlfriend, but you guys have sex one last time and do that five times. What's ironic here though, is she was also jealous of my newfound escapades during this. But like, if you didn't do a spin cycle on a half dozen dicks, I wouldn't be sleeping around right now. Eventually though, it really was the last time and somehow, luckily, I came out STD free after being a heathen for weeks. An act of mercy from a benevolent god maybe, and in a sweet act of cosmic karma, she did not come out scot-free, but it was a very curable one, don't get too worried. Regardless, we ended our lease on the apartment that she no longer lived in, and my contract with the military ended the same month. I then moved across the country for a job offer, to a state I'd never stepped foot in before. No friends, family, or exes to be had there, and let me tell you, great decision. Jesus. Sure it was hard at first, I'd never lived alone till then. I'd always had a roommate or my ex. There was no one's house to visit, but I learned my new job, found I really liked it, and got comfortable in my new apartment. I made some new friends and life started to look up, as this also happens to be where I met my current fiancé, something I thought wouldn't be possible. But after my divorce, I met someone that's so much of a better match. It's mind-boggling that I got married before. Though I'm hesitant to marry again, she's patient and loving, and we truly are happy. After a couple years we bought a house together, and I might even be crazy enough to go through with getting married again, but don't tell her that. I guess this is my long-winded way of saying that things can work out, even when they seem impossible. My divorce didn't put me in Joe Exotic status, my new job is amazing, and my fiancé is even better. I look back at where I was in that old post, and think it's crazy how much has changed. I'm happy to come home, we're so compatible, it's like this is what life is supposed to be like. So thanks for reading, and good luck to any of you out there in a crazy situation like I was. It gets better, and if you ever need an ear to give you advice you'll likely ignore, I have two to lend. And now, for OP's update almost 8 years later. It's a sad day to be posting here again. This is my second marriage after a mess of a first, and the idea of being married now or ever is losing its appeal. Anyways, for context I've been with my now wife for 8 years. We have a toddler with a slight condition that makes raising him a little more difficult than it already would be. My wife stays at home since I make enough luckily, but this has led to her social network dwindling since she quit her job and had our child. We're at the point now though where life isn't constantly cleaning bottles and midnight feedings, so we're getting more sleep at least and feeling human again. We split chores and baby time to keep things fair too. Along the way I've been as supportive as I can by introducing her to my friends' wives, a few of my family members, and agreeing to watch our son at certain times just to give her time to go out and make friends. My wife hasn't been able to make any real friends and she goes to therapy, but hasn't been impressed by it. The last few months we seem to be fighting more often. She's seemed checked out and is easily angered with me when things in general get stressful. When we fight, I communicate why I'm hurt by her when I didn't do anything wrong. Usually, our son is stressing her out and she begins yelling at me since I'm the only one around. Well, after a few months of this, we had a big heart-to-heart. -heart. It seemed really productive to where we even got a babysitter and went on a wonderful date the next day. We both raved about how much fun it was, like before we had a kid. She complained about how few friends she had still, and that it sucks because women make terrible friends but guys only ever want sex, but this was just a light conversation on the way home. When we got home, I noticed her on Snapchat a lot, which we usually use when talking to our families. I saw a name I didn't recognize though, and of course you can see where this plot twist is going. I asked who she's messaging, thinking it was some uncle or something, but she lied. She said it was her brother, but clearly wasn't.
I'm I feel like we've been here before. Have we been here before? So I followed up with No, who's John Smith. And you'd think she just saw a murder. She froze so bad. The next few hours were the trickle truth playbook as is so common. But basically, what I'd saw was her ending her long distance affair with John. Ironically, she felt so good after our heart to heart that she was caught doing the right thing, if you can call it that. If she'd ghosted him or kept messaging him when I was asleep, I might have never caught it. So what happened exactly? John was an old fuck buddy from before we met. They never dated officially because she wasn't ready to settle down, so they just had sex and hung out back then. He reached back out to say hi after years of no contact, and she humored him because she was feeling lonely in her words. She just liked having someone else to talk to at first when I was at work all day. However, she quickly made things sexual and sent nudes of herself. Oh my god, this is happening again. He of course reciprocated as that's probably why he reached out in the first place. For five months they'd alternate between innocent talking and sexting over Snapchat. This was usually short videos, a few pics, and dirty talking. Soon that wasn't enough though, and she started posting on local not safe for work subreddits for more attention. She sexted maybe another dozen guys she met from there, mainly dirty talk and some nudes. This all went on for about five months to my knowledge. If you saw my previous posts, I have a low tolerance for cheating these days. My wife knew this. She said she did the minimal effort to get the attention and excitement she wanted from them. So simple faceless nudes, selfies, videos playing with herself, some dirty talk, etc. So here's my predicament. I warned her that I have a zero tolerance policy after my last marriage. She should have known better anyways, but especially after sharing that ordeal I wouldn't have expected this from her. But my issue is that if I were to ever forgive it, this is basically the extent that I could. Every word you just spoke has made me violently angry. Oh great! Now I'm agreeing with Sal! If it was physical, I definitely couldn't and I know that. I love my son and love my wife, but knowing that she's capable of this has killed me. Looking back on fond memories, especially any in the last five months feel hollow or even tainted. Some nudes used lingerie that I bought her, which kills me. I don't want to break up this family, but staying together for the kids never works either. So my question is, what would you do and how would you feel in my shoes? She's already switched therapists since she believes that was a factor. Her last never solved things, just let you vent, and offered to get rid of her smartphone to reduce temptation. She's been pretty open with me and answered my questions as well now. She seems to grasp the levity of it now, though if she didn't before, I really wish she had instead of thinking this was even sort of okay. Thoughts? TLDR. Caught my wife breaking it off with her long-distance affair partner and posting NSFW on Reddit. I'm not sure I can get past sexting someone else when we're married with a child. OP. What the fuck? Have you learned nothing from the last time this has happened to you? Do you remember what happened to you eight years ago? Do you remember the shame, the humiliation, the despair you felt? If so, then why the fuck are you thinking of doing the exact same mistake you did? Why the hell did you even got married again knowing full well what is going to happen when the next wife gets fat and bored again? My god, you're thinking about forgiving her? You little you son of a f***ing I'm going to tear off your and shove them right up your and then on your with in the and your so then you'll have to sideways. OP, are you some sort of masochist? You need to divorce her, my dude. You need to set an example to your son that disrespect and infidelities should never be tolerated. And then, I want you to go to therapy to find out exactly why you keep choosing cheaters as a partner. My god, have you not learned your lesson at all? I'll be looking out for any further disappointments that you will post on this subreddit. Viewer support is the best way for me to remain independent and continue bringing you these daily videos, which will always be here on my channels for you to watch absolutely free. So please consider subscribing to me on Rumble and on YouTube. Both will be linked in the description box down below. Thanks for listening everyone. If you even somewhat enjoyed today's story, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and if you really like it, consider subscribing to Pat's Hunt to never miss a future upload. Stay strong.